everyone, today we're going to be making a silk button and tie up top. Starting with the front bodice pattern, I'm going to be moving the dart in by 1.5 inches and then adding an inch to the bottom of that, then blending it into the side seam. And then I'm going to add half an inch extension for the buttons or the size of your button and lower it by one quarter of an inch. And you want to keep the front neckline straight for two inches, then blend it into the rest of the neckline. And then I added an inch to the bottom of the front bodice and a tie that's an inch and a half wide and four inches long. Then make the seam allowance half an inch all the way around and you'll cut two of that. For the back, I'm going to add half an inch seam allowance except not for the middle because we're cutting it on the fold. And then we're going to add an inch to the bottom of that and you're just going to cut one on fold. For the sleeve, you're going to trace and cut a short sleeve block that is 2.5 inches long. And then you'll find the midpoints between the three lines already there and draw lines from that. Cut them leaving a small amount still attached so you can um, move the paper. Draw a straight balance line and pull the middle so each piece is half an inch away from the line. Then separate the rest at one inch. Um, trace that then add half an inch seam allowance and you'll cut two sleeves. For the front facing, you're going to trace around the front bodice and then in half an inch because of the seam allowance. Since it's already there, you want to put it in so it's the right size. And make sure the facing is 2.5 inches wide and then you'll match the back bodice neckline to the front facing and repeat the previous steps. And now for the collar, we're going to make it 3 inches wide and the measure of the neckline, the front and back added, minus 2 inches, and that's the length. And then we're going to mark the point where the front and back neckline meet at the bottom. This is the shoulder cross mark. And mark half an inch from the bottom at center front and blend with the shoulder cross mark. Add a roll line at 1 inch and a half that goes straight until reaching the shoulder cross mark, then blend down to the half inch mark. Add a triangle extension that is three quarters of an inch long and then add half an inch seam allowance around except for center back because we're cutting it on the fold. Also, let me know if you would like to see drafting instructions on a website in future videos because I feel like it would be a lot easier to show in video form and on a website, but it's up to you guys, so let me know down below in the comments. We're going to start out by tracing all the pieces and cutting them on the fabric. My suggestion is cutting it on a lighter paper so you can pin it to the fabric, but at the time I only had like hard pattern paper, so I just ended up using kind of a little decoration as a paperweight and tracing it with pencil. Also using like a fabric marker or fabric pencil would be better, I just didn't have one at the time. And for the darts, I always take a sharp pen and poke the dart point so I can mark it on the fabric. Also, I used like pen and pencil kind of thing. Um, and then I cut the notches of the bottom of the dart so when it comes time to make the dart, it's a lot easier. And here I just cut the back piece on the fold and marked the dart points. Now I'm just tracing and cutting the collar. You want two pieces for the collar, obviously, so you have a clean finish. And then you'll cut two sleeve pieces.
For the facing, you could also cut it on the fold, but here I just cut two pieces because of the amount of fabric I got. I actually think I got one meter of fabric and would probably suggest a meter and a half for this project. And now I'm just pinning the sleeve in half, right sides together. And I like to start out doing bodices and like uh, the back and front just by pinning the darts and sewing them because it makes it a lot easier to construct it afterwards. And I'm just pinning together the facing. Obviously you can skip that if you already did it. And then pin the collar together. For the collar, you're going to sew it all the way around leaving an opening, so sometimes it's good if you use pins to mark that so you don't forget. Maybe use like a different color or something. And then continuing with the darts on the back. And to sew the darts, I always take the bobbin thread and stretch it out um, to meet the dart point from the notches. And then it makes that triangle shape and it's really easy to follow. It might be a little bit more difficult to sew, but it helps in the long run. And I find darts are way easier to make now. Now I'm doing the collar, leaving that small opening, um, just so you can turn it inside out. And make sure before you turn the collar inside out that you cut off the corners of it. That just makes for a more crisp, like, sharp end. Although I still find it really difficult to get that, like, perfect point. So if you guys have any tips, leave them down below. And now I'm just pinning together the front and back pieces and also the shoulders. You want to be careful when you're sewing the sides together because of the dart, just make sure it's facing the way you want it to. I've heard that it depends on like, if you have a bigger bust, I think the dart goes down maybe, and if you have a smaller bust, the dart goes up. It could be the opposite way, but if you google that, there should be a good answer. And then you can kind of decide which way you're going to put it. And now I'm just pinning the collar onto the neckline, you'll want to leave an inch space from the neckline because um, just the way the collar is shaped, you want to keep that shape. And now I'm pinning the facing to the top.
top, you want to pin it right sides together. So at first it's kind of like on the outside with the wrong side facing out and then turn it inside um, and then the right side of the facing is on the inside showing kind of thing. So then you get a clean neckline and like the ties are all clean. I ended up doing a zigzag stitch after around the edge of the, the raw edge of the neckline or sorry, the facing, and then just folding it in and hemming that. And also make sure to clip the corner right where the corner meets along kind of the button placket area and the tie because otherwise you can't really turn it out getting like a clean corner. And now I'm just pinning the sleeve right sides together to the armholes. I find this is kind of difficult to show on camera but as long as you meet the side seam and the seam of the sleeve together at first it's a lot easier to do that and by matching the middle of the top of the sleeve it also helps to put a notch there so then it's faster to match I'm just doing a rolled hem on the sleeves. I chose a rolled hem for the sleeves and the bottom. For me, I always end up making the rolled hem a bit too thick, and I tried to use the rolled hem foot, but those are really difficult to use. I think it's easier if you use like a cotton or something. It also helps if you do a zigzag stitch just on the raw edge before enfolding the rolled hem, which I end up doing um, on the bottom of the shirt. I just ended up adding some iron-on fusing. I only cut a piece for where the buttons were gonna go, but I mean, I feel like it would just be easier if you did it for the full facing. And you could also do it for the collar, but I honestly like how soft it was because it's silk, so you want it to flow, but it's totally up to you. I kind of just forgot that since I was working on a lightweight fabric, I would need something to stabilize it for the buttonholes. And I just marked the buttonholes. I have like the info on the screen on how to do that and it took me about 10 like practice tries on making buttonholes to actually get to the part of making them so just take your time with this just follow your machine's instructions also I know you can do it by hand probably by embroidery so just I'll try to find like a link below that might help you out if you don't have the machine piece And you're just going to clip open the buttonholes. I ended up making my buttonholes too far away from the front. They ended up being like an inch away, which I would suggest just do half an inch or however big your buttons are away from the center front because it was a little bit too far away. It still worked, but you'll see in the end. And now I'm just sewing on the buttonholes. Um, I only use a single thread, I don't double it, so it's like a little piece hangs off the edge, and I just 
loop it through the buttonhole a few times and then wrap it around the thread underneath and then just sew it to the shirt only sticking it through like a thread of the fabric this just makes for a stronger button after all of that your shirt is done you just need to button it up iron it tie it and you're all good thank you for watching i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you want to see next time Life is misery.